Welcome to the 1980s. It's all about easy care fabrics, but we're gonna come in uh, without a lot of shoulder pads. We're gonna build some shoulder pads and we're gonna leave with great football shoulder pads. Mainly, we think of our designer, Claude Montana, as the person that gives us that new look. So here we are, a very tailored uh, pantsuit. So 1970, it really is, in fact, 1970 in California was the edict from the Department of Education there that high schoolers could wear pantsuits. So 1970, so by the time we get to 1980, everybody, including grandma, is wearing a pantsuit and you never get grandma out of pants again. Um, in my day, Grandma wore a dress, a little mini flower dress. Uh, today, we're reminiscent of that edict in California, and we start the 1980s with a washable uh, faux suede pantsuit. Matching, everything had to match. 1970s. This would be a cocktail dress coming in with a little bit of a kimono sleeve, but definitely a little bit of graphic detailing to this particular dress. No shoulder pads in this one, because we're gonna start out the, the 1980s um, with a rather relaxed shoulder. But within a few years, by the time we get to 1985, we've started to build our shoulder. Because we get tired of a certain look, what do we do? We enhance it, we start to move on. Until we're exhausted from it, and then we're gonna move on again. But I wanted to point out the shoulder pad here and show you the, in fact, it'll actually come off, and show you that uh, the depth of the uh, polyfoam that's inside here. And this was very interesting because if you took the shoulder pad out, and these were made to come out so that you could launder uh, the garment, uh, but if you took them out, you still couldn't wear them without the shoulder pad because remember, we've built in a couple extra inches in this shoulder seam area. So if you took it out, your dress would start to bag in front. I learned a really good lesson in buying something that had shoulder pads in it. My first buying job, I, won, I bought, went to New York and I bought a Burberry trench coat, it had shoulder pads in it. I tried to remake that coat a million different ways because it was very expensive to me and I never could. I never could get the shoulder line to fit in the modern Armani version. So uh, don't, don't get too drastic if it's a piece of outerwear you're gonna wear forever. Uh, but again, this, this kind of 1970s little day dress moves into the 1980s, but changes both in the addition of the shoulder pad and also bright neon colors. We're gonna to start to see um, this color palette become very vibrant. Oh, so vibrant. <laughs> we have, again, a huge shoulder pad on this that doesn't quite come across. There we go. So again, you could see where this would be very hard to remake because of the attachment of the sleeve. But look at these colors. So this is 1985. This would have been um, for a cocktail dress. It's rather short. And the interesting thing here is it probably weighs a good 20 pounds at least, this, the sequining here. By now, all of this is done in beaded, uh, the sequins are done by machine in China. So it is very inexpensive to import um, these Chinese beaded or, or sequined garments, and you see them everywhere from television and film to um, Phoenix, Arizona. We're not gonna give up on our color. Here's that classic jog suit. I'm missing the bottoms, but I was able to hang on to this jacket. And again, look at the sleeve line. This is not something you can tailor and create a very narrow uh, body. You have to just put it in the either the thrift basket or in my History of Costume collection, but very much a 1980s jog suit. And the interesting thing is everybody wore these, and the people that loved them most were our seniors. And you could go to Leisure World or any of these places, and the jog suit was the uh, 
clothing of the day. And with that, I'm going to take you into the 1990s.